Well, good morning, everybody. Jeff Slakey and Spencer Hughes again here on the Daybreak Show on the phone line representing our 6th district in the great state. It's Representative Derek Kilmer. Good morning, Derek. Hey, good morning. Great to be back with you. It's always nice talking with you. I know you are uh, really uh, rolling up your sleeves and getting to work here to try to help out folks, not only in the 6th, but all in Washington and across the country. Uh, Yesterday, you and uh, the Appropriation Committee, some of the Democrats there, had a discussion with Secretary Mnuchin. This is one of the big things we've been hearing about with this uh, Paycheck Protection Program, the PPP. We're starting to hear, and I'm sure the bulk of monies going out are going out to where they need to be. But some of these uh, big corporations, larger companies, sporting entities, they're seeing some of that money and that's not where it's supposed to go. Yep. Uh, and, and, and again, thanks for having me. You know, the, the, uh, this pandemic has been, you know, obviously disruptive from the standpoint of public health, but it's really hammered a lot, a lot of our local employers, in part because, you know, in essence, our economy, our main streets were put into a medically induced coma to try to stop the spread of this thing. And so in response to that, you saw uh, a number of SBA programs that were established to help our main street employers get through this. And, you know, things like the Paycheck Protection Program was a program set up through SBA to provide assistance to small businesses there, it's a loan, but importantly, it's a loan that would be forgiven uh, if the employer keeps their employees on the payroll. It was designed to be for small businesses, not for large publicly traded companies, not for the Los Angeles Lakers, a team I have always hated and now hate even more. Um, and, and and so part of the conversation that we had with Secretary Mnuchin was, gosh, we got to make sure that this money's getting where it's needed. You know, it's need, needed on our main streets of our local communities. You know, I've been talking to employees. Gosh, I talked to an employer last week who said, I spent 32 years building my business. And he said, I put my life and I put my blood and I put my sweat and my tears into this business. And I got a whole bunch of families who depend on me for a paycheck. And I'm trying to decide right now whether I should hunker down and try to weather this or just fold the tent and, and throw in the towel. And you know, we want to make sure those employers are able to to keep going. And so it is, to me, just dead wrong to see any of that money go to large, well-funded, publicly traded companies. It needs to be going to our small businesses on Main Street. And I was actually pleased to hear Secretary Mnuchin agree with that sentiment uh, uh, to, to say that um, any loan over $2 million uh, that they intend to audit Uh, They've sent out word that they will not forgive that loan until after an audit. They've done that in part uh, to try to get some of these big fellas to just give the money back so it can go back out the door uh, for our small businesses. Did you get a sense from him how these organizations got through? Well, um, in some instances, the, the, the form is not that complicated, and you have to make an attestation that you meet the lending criteria. Um, He has also made clear, and I was pleased to hear him say this, if someone attested to things that are not true, um, they're um, subject to criminal penalty. And so, and he has made now, he's put that word out, uh, again, with an eye towards having some of these big fellas um, give back the money um, under threat of criminal, uh, criminal penalty. It's a, you know, it's a pickle. And I, you know, I've been even the last time I was on with you, I've been somewhat critical of, of, uh, of some of the SBA effort on this, uh, on this front and and some of the Treasury Department's effort on this front. I think they were too slow to get guidance out to some of our small lenders, our community based lenders, small banks uh, and and small credit unions. Um, You know, and as a consequence in that first round a lot of the folks that you know we see in in Mason County and Grace Harbor County um, were kind of left on the dock as the boat pulled away. Um, we sent a letter to the SBA in essence saying you got to do better. We got to get guidance out. We got to make sure that we're helping our lenders and the small businesses that rely on them. Um, but importantly, in uh, last week when Congress put an additional 310 billion dollars into these programs, it did something else that was I think actually pretty important. And that is, that is, it carved out some of the funding 
um, for small lenders, for sm small community-based banks, for small uh, credit unions. They carved out another set of funds for mid-sized uh, banks um, uh, with an eye towards making sure that funds were getting where they're needed on our main streets. Talk to me a little bit about what you are hearing when it comes to the testing. Uh, we've heard a lot over the last two months or so from the presidential administration about the number of tests, where we would be today in testing rollout. He was talking, uh, President Trump was talking earlier in the week about possibly getting to 5 million tests, uh, you know, even within a day or two, you know, to get the, the testing ramped up. But it just does not seem to be the same messaging that I'm hearing from the other health officials on those daily briefings and stuff like that. Yeah. Let me mention one quick thing about the PPP and then I'll answer that. Sure. I should have mentioned um, uh, Congresswoman Herrera Butler and I have sponsored a bipartisan bill to triple the size of that paycheck protection program uh, and to provide the ability for small, small businesses to get an extension on it. Because if, if the eight weeks of payroll protection may not be enough for some employers to weather this storm, you know, again, the goal here is to have the backs of our local employers. Um, and, and so we've got a bill. It's bipartisan. It's picking up steam. Uh, and we're going to keep pushing for that. O on the testing issue, you know, this is an area where the federal government's just not doing enough. It's not uh, sufficiently meeting the need. Last week's bill, um, I think, should be helpful. It provided $25 billion to try to further ramp up testing and importantly called for a national testing strategy. Um, and, and, and so why is that important? Well, let's look at the state of Washington just as an example. Right now, the state of Washington's at about 4,000 tests per day. The governor has said that to be able to meet the needs on the public health side and to open up our economy, we need to be at least at 15 to 20,000 tests per day. And, you know, and right now you've got our state competing with 49 other states for swabs and for reagents and for personal protective equipment. And so that's where having a coordinated effort by the federal government really matters. Um, the bill last week called for a national strategy. What that should not be is just 50 state strategies stapled to each other. Sure. I think what it needs to be is the Centers for Disease Control uh, and FEMA identifying, one, what's the target national number of tests per day that we need, and what's the criteria of who should be assured a test? Two, um, what's the plan for how the federal government will ensure that those tests are rapidly performed and processed, and where we make sure we have the necessary supplies like personal protective equipment and swabs and reagents and everything else uh, that we need. The other piece of this, and you've heard the governor speak to this, um, until a vaccine's av available, our best tool to slow the spread of this is to re rely on traditional and uh, effective methods of infectious disease management. And the foundation of that is contact tracing, you know, by, by quickly finding and testing contacts of reported cases, then we can prevent another um, big outbreak of this. That's super labor intensive. And when communities begin to reopen, you know, our state, um, our local public health folks, um, our tribal uh, health folks are just not going to have the capacity to do that work on their own. Um, you know, Johns Hopkins has said you need uh, an extra 100,000 contact tracers across the U.S. They say it's about 30 contact tracers per 100,000 uh, uh, people in our uh, in our country. So one of the things I've called for is let's have the federal government provide some help to our uh, to build that public health workforce. Um, uh, let's provide some funding. Let's use um, uh, things like our national and community service programs, uh, folks like AmeriCorps that have experience hiring and, and deploying folks um, to, to provide some help on the ground. Do you uh, understand the reluctance on the Defense Production Act. It seems like a lot of those things you were just talking about, the swabs and the other parts of the testing, could be fixed if, if the administration decides to ramp up and push through more of this Defense Production Act. We've heard the president say that in, in areas he's targeted it, and he most recently has been talking to Tyson Foods and other meat 
uh, producing companies. So they stay open uh, despite their down numbers of employees. But wouldn't a lot of this be fixed if this production act was rolled out fully? And I'm not saying that once the feds take over, you know, I don't know, GM and say you're making blank, that they can't go back to making cars, but for a set up period of time, is it possible to just put all that focus on there and then go back and let the and let capital capitalism go back to what it needs to do? Yes, you're yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and I have raised that concern directly with the vice president and with the president. I was on a call with him two weeks ago. It was one of those where you press star one and you get to ask a question. And my question uh, was focused on ramping up our testing capacity and pulling the lever more aggressively on the Defense Production Act. It does not make right now we have scarce. There's a scarcity um, based on demand. We have demand for swabs. We have demands for uh, for masks and for gloves and for face shields. And uh, this is why that, you know, there is a Defense Production Act. Um, I have heard the president say we are at war against a hidden enemy, yeah. uh, an invisible enemy, this virus. But we would never send our soldiers into war without the equipment that they need uh, to be successful. And right now, the equipment that they need to be successful is personal protective equipment and testing equipment. And that's why we have a Defense Production Act. So we, I have directly expressed that to the president, to the vice president. Um, I am a sponsor of legislation that would mandate it, that would mandate pulling that lever harder on the Defense Production Act. Because listen, one, we need it. We need that supply um, so that we can get our economy back to normal and to save some lives. And two, um, we know we can't depend on China or any other foreign country for it. We need to be able to produce it uh, uh, here in the United States. U.S. Congressman Derek Kilmer has been working hard. Uh, We've been talking with him for now months, although Sometimes, Derek, between you and me, it feels like years uh, that we've been in the middle of all this. Uh, but I know you have been working very hard for the folks in the 6th and the, and the state of Washington and the rest of the country. We could talk uh, for an hour about all this stuff, but uh, let's put a pause on that today and we'll come back and we'll catch up again in a week or two. Super. Well, let me just end by um, saying thanks for uh, for your interest in all these issues. If folks have questions or needs where we can lend a hand, um, don't hesitate to reach out to me or to my office. We're just at kilmer.house.gov. Um, I work for you. That's how this works. And I got a great team. We're working 24 seven to just make sure we have the backs of the folks we represent. He's also on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. You can find all those links as well on the website. He just mentioned kilmer.house.gov. It's U S Congressman Derek Kilmer. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. Take care.